Well, good morning. So I appreciate you all fighting the uh, Secret Service and the traffic and everything else to get over here. I know that's a little difficult, but uh, uh, obviously it's an important event. But uh, I'm going to take gratification in that you chose to pay fealty to me instead of the president. So, <laughs> so um, uh, just real quick by way of introduction, I'm uh, Doug Wells, National Membership Director. You yeah, slide, please. Uh, for the DAV, uh, I am stationed at our national headquarters in Cold Spring, Kentucky, uh, with my wife and uh, three of my four children, uh, Dominic, Hope, and Garrick. Um, my 19-year-old is currently finishing up engineer school at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And uh, when he comes home uh, here in about a week or so, he'll have a few weeks with us, and then he goes to Okinawa for two years. So he is uh, doing well. Um, also to my left here, uh, I've got my wonderful chair to the interim membership committee, uh, Warren Tobin. Warren, say hi. Everybody knows Warren, right? Um, and then uh, get another member, uh, Ed Keck, from uh, the great state of Louisiana, as you can tell from all his accoutrements. So uh, we have a couple other members uh, to the committee as well. Uh, Richard Fournier and Elizabeth Ellenbo, I'm sure they're just uh, stuck in traffic or whatever, trying to make their way. So we'll welcome them if they are able to make it. Uh, also, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, introduce again Heather Kohlmeyer. She's one of my analysts at uh, National Headquarters. She's currently stationed down in Cyber Central, uh, close to where registration is, offering assistance on the membership system or web portal, webmaster issues. Um, so please take a moment to stop by if you have questions or concerns about anything related to any of the technical platforms that the membership department employs. And then last but not least, my right arm, Robin Higgins. Robin, stand up. Robin is uh, our membership manager. She's in the trenches every day with our employees, ensuring that uh, uh, they're giving 110% on behalf of you and DAV every day. So I appreciate Robin. Um, Again, I've got a lot of very nice stuff to try to roll out. Um, I have to do it in a, in a quick manner. I want to make sure that I can get as much of this out as I can today before I start to lose some of you to go get in line for the president, if that's the case. But it's very exciting. So uh, without further ado, a uh, little bit on the agenda, but I want to, like I said, smoke through this pretty quick. Next slide, Rob. And, and by the way, feel free to email me. My contact information was on the front. You can get one of my cards up here. Uh, if you'd like, we can shoot you the uh, presentation. I can email it to you, no sweat, okay? Um, <clears throat> so just real quick, I want to talk about a couple of the accomplishments that uh, the membership department has uh, been able to be fortunate enough to uh, make happen since I took the reins last time I talked to you. Um, we're doing a great job of utilizing uh, statistical and trend analysis to try to help us ensure we're putting our money at the right place at the right time uh, on behalf of the organization and members and to help give you the tools that you need to do what you do for us every single day. So uh, really trying to track all the metrics to make sure we're doing the right thing. Uh, we're trying to make better use of technology uh, and I'm going to get into that here in a little bit. Uh, some cool innovative things that we're doing. Uh, this, is, this was a big one the last time we talked, new members getting their membership cards under 30 days. So round of applause for that one. I'll, I'll take that one. <laughs> but uh, um, that's, for the most part, that is the case. We had a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, we got a little bit overwhelmed with uh, the, res the massive response we got to our mailing last winter, uh, our member prospect mailing. That's a good problem to have, right? So uh, we, we worked through it. Robin and the, and the team uh, were diligent and uh, in making that happen, and so uh, you know we're we're trucking along. But for the most part, 30 days from the time I get the application at headquarters, whether it's a paper application or through our online application, uh, we should acknowledge them as a member, and they should have their membership card. Okay. Typically, it's about three weeks. Uh, we've designed a, a new membership campaign, a V campaign. So anytime you see this V, you know it belongs to membership. It's one of uh, the membership department's programs. So if you have questions on it, certainly give us a call. Uh, so everywhere it's appropriate to brand that with, we will do so. And then also uh, the biggest one, 
as you've heard talked about many times, is we were able to sustain a 1.3 million membership uh, at, at the end of the membership year. So after we deceased uh, from our roles, those members who we lost, unfortunately, during the course of the year, based on the match with Social Security Administration, we were about 5,000 above 1.3 million members. So give yourselves a round of applause for that one. Thank you so much for all of your help. Uh, go ahead. So a lot of time and effort went into this. Uh, I'm pretty proud of this. Uh, you can see the transition from military service on the left to membership on the right. We've got folks signing one another up, uh, helping families, uh, uh, you know, get taken care of, fulfilling our promises uh, to those folks. So uh, it's a really good, um, it's a really good earmark for DAV. Uh, for membership. Next slide. The first thing we employed it on, of course, was our new membership cards. Uh, I think they're pretty snappy. Uh, the biggest thing that I like is that we reincorporated uh, Old Glory, the red, white, and blue, back into the cards. Uh, there was a lot of uh, consternation about that when we did the rebranding. So uh, paying homage to our, our national ensign again. Uh, but the other big key that I want to point out here is at the bottom, we've got the number to the National Membership Department. So if you ever need to get a hold of us or anything, you don't got to search on the internet. You gotta, all you got to do is pull out your wallet and there we are. Okay? You are not out there alone. Anything we're doing, we're supporting. If you have problems, questions, give us a call. Next slide. Okay, so pretty excited about this. Uh, you are going to be the very first folks to see our new membership eligibility video. Uh, it's about a two-minute video. It is designed for social media purposes, so to be easily played on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, things like that, okay? <clears throat> of course, there's going to be an awful lot more that goes into membership. But as I traveled around the country this year going to different conferences and conventions, I would literally have a member recruiter drag someone up to me by their collar and say, will you please tell this person they have to be service connected by VA to be a member? No, you don't. Will you please tell this person they have to serve in combat to be a member? No, you don't. You know, so there's a lot of dis you know, dispelling those misnomers that uh, really kind of came to the forefront of my thought process. And so that's kind of the purpose behind this. What we've also done with it, though, is we are including our vendor partners in the uh, video so that uh, we can get extra mileage out of it. We can go to Ford, we can go to these other partners, USAA, and say, hey, every time somebody sees, you know, thinks about being a member of DAV, they're thinking about you as well. So we're getting that extra mileage out of this uh, video. So I'll get communication shortly after this to put this on our, on our Facebook page and other social media. Share the heck out of it for me. Uh, please do that because I think it's, it's very, very important to really kind of clarify who's eligible, to be a member and why they should be a member. So. As one of the nation's leading veteran service organizations, DAV's successes on behalf of veterans rely solely on the strength and engagement of its members, which help ensure veterans' issues are properly addressed in your local community and in Washington. But who are DAV members and how can you become one? Well, first, any service member who is not dishonorably discharged and sustained an injury or illness during their time in the military, whether service connected by the VA or not, or anyone who aggravated a previous injury during his or her time in service, is eligible for DAV membership so long as they serve during a period of armed conflict. And no, it doesn't have to be direct combat. So what does DAV membership include? It's well known that DAV services, including professional help with VA claims and the transition and employment assistance DAV provides all veterans at no cost, do not require membership in DAV. However, DAV members do get savings on Ford vehicles, exclusive USAA rewards credit card points, and year-round discounted pricing on hotel and rental car rates, just to name a few. You also get a free subscription to DAV Magazine. But most importantly, especially if you were helped by DAV, becoming a member gives you the opportunity to pay it forward and add your voice to help your fellow veterans. And how do you become a DAV member? Just log on to DAV.org slash membership and fill out an application. You can submit it online or send it in the mail. 
Either way, joining the AV's ranks brings individual perks and strengthens the voices of our nation's veterans in your local community and in Washington. Learn more about becoming a DAV member by visiting DAV.org slash membership and help fulfill the promises to the men and women who serve. Good stuff. So, you know, direct, to the point, very, uh, very succinct. Um, so, of course, there's an awful lot more uh, that goes into being a member. Uh, it's hard to compress all of that into a two-minute video. Um, the member benefits that we're putting together, uh, we are revamping that entire package. Uh, so the simplicity of this video allows us to, you know, interchange things. I mean, it's not going to happen, but if Ford tomorrow was to say, ah, we don't want to partner with you guys anymore, then we could highlight a different partner vendor, you know, that sort of thing. So that, that's perfect right there. Uh, but the most important thing is just kind of dispelling the, a lot of those misnomers that, um, you know, I've encountered as I've traveled uh, since I've been national membership director. So share the heck out of this for me. Uh, share it on your personal Facebook pages, your LinkedIn accounts, Twitter accounts. Um, let's make this go viral because I think it's important uh, that people understand, you know, what it, is, what it takes to be a member of DAV and what their benefits are. And we just want this to kind of wet their whistle so they go seeking out that other information, right? Okay, so I appreciate the help on that. <clears throat> so, um, you heard in the video, it, it is still feasible to submit a paper-based application and mail it into us or uh, whatever the case may be. But I really need your help in driving as much of our recruitment activity online as possible. Earlier I mentioned looking at uh, statistics, trend analysis. Uh, there is a proclivity for members, member prospects, to just pay off their members um, or their membership if we can get that credit card from them up front. The folks that don't want to pay the whole 250 or whatever that amount is based on their age, if we get the recurring credit card from them, they're exponentially more likely to convert to a full life member. Okay, so the more we can do to convert folks. Uh, to, um, you know, or to get memberships via the online site with a credit card, the more it's going to help you as well. I know sometimes uh, a big topic of conversation is, well, how does Doug or the membership director come up with the formula they use to, uh, to set our goal, okay? Well, I do a calculation that involves part life members, and what I will tell you is that the less the fewer part life members that you have on your rolls, the smaller your goal will be. Part life memberships are anathema to your goal. Okay? Also, I'm convinced that when you do a membership drive and you give 40 bucks, you know, pay the first 40 bucks to somebody without getting a credit card on file, that probably 95% of the time they, they get my quarterly statement in the mail and they just throw it in the round file with the rest of the junk mail. Okay? So your focus, you know, I'm not saying not to sign up a part life member, that is not what I'm saying. But all of your energies, to whatever extent possible, should be directed towards converting the part life members that you have on your rows to full life members and recruiting full life members out of the gate. That will help your goals in the long term strategically. Okay, and then everybody's goals will be real small and I'll have to figure out some other way to make it tough for you. So. Um, <clears throat> Yes. Uh, sure. Uh, so, like my chapter's got ten part life members. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that the goal should be five. Right. Well, it's fifty-five percent of your total part life membership plus your total full life members. So, if you've got a thousand full life members in your chapter and a hundred part life members, I'm using round numbers because I was a marine and I don't like math. Um, <laughs> So 55% of 100 is 55, so your goal would be 1,055 full life members. It's that simple. So the lower your, full, your part life member total is, the lower your goal is going to be. And then everybody's making goal. Raleigh, you look like you want to say something, or you just want to rip on me being a Marine. Is that what it is? Yeah, I know. Okay. We'll move on. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to be available to Luke to play at a... 
yeah, I, we, I, like I said, we're going to share the heck out of it. I can email you the MP4, the whole nine, whatever you want, buddy. Yep. So, uh, you know, if you have a smartphone or tablet, uh, whether it's um, Droid-based or Safari-based for your Internet Explorer, uh, your Internet browser, rather, um, you can use this. You, you know, the old, one of the first things that I was told when I first came on board with DAV was, as a member recruiter, always have an application on you, right? How many of us have heard that over the years? If you've got an electronic device, now you do, okay? So it is mobile friendly. You can go right to the site. It's totally PCI compliant. They are not entering credit card information into your phone. They are entering the credit card information into the secure website, okay? So you don't have to worry about, you know, storing financial information on your phone. The, the better thing to do, if they don't want to do it, they're not comfortable, have them do it in their phone, okay? Um, and then it's on, on uh, their device. So, but nothing is stored on the phone with respect to, you know, maintaining credit card numbers or anything. Um, so I'm going to show you a great way um, to do this so you never have to type a web, web address in again. Um, and I want your help with what, they, what the kids call guerrilla marketing, sharing it with with all of your partners and, and, you know, getting it out on the street. <clears throat> so, we have created a, a mobile device app icon. Uh, and you can do this right now. We can go along with it. If it doesn't work, uh, you know, it's okay. Just get with me. With the Droid stuff, the, some different versions of Chrome or whatever may give you a little hiccup. But if you got the most current updates on your phone, this is how it should work. So on the left, you can see the message that you get from an, an Apple phone. On the right is a Droid phone. So what you do is you go into the address bar of your web browser, not the search bar. Go to the address bar and type in that very simple uh, address. No www, none of that. Just dav.org slash, it's the forward slash, member app. Okay. So www, or, uh, no www, so it's just dav.org slash member app. Okay, so when you do that, what will happen is it will take you to the online membership application. What they call a light box will pop up, this, these directions that you see here um, on the screen, and it offers a direction based on uh, whichever type of, of uh, platform you have. So, in essence, all you're doing is saving it to your home screen, okay? You're creating an icon. So, it's very easy. It's pretty simple with the Apple. You just click the little arrow coming out of the box at the bottom. You slide your little menu across until you see the plus sign that says add to home screen. Click that. It'll pop up one more screen. You'll confirm by pressing add again. It'll shut down on you. And then you'll see your icon on your, on your phone. From that point forward, all you ever have to do is press that icon and it goes right to the app. So you've always got an application on you. Uh, same difference with the Droid, it's just it's a little additional step. Um, when you get the light box, all you're doing is those three little dots in the top right corner. Those are your menu options. Click that, your menu should drop down. You should have an option called Add to Home Screen. Click on that, it'll give you another confirmation screen. Click on it again. I believe it's add as well. And then uh, the Droid doesn't shut down though, but go ahead and shut it down back out to your desktop or whatever they call it on a, on a pad or um, uh, phone. And uh, you should see the icon there at that point now as well. So again, we can help walk you through that stuff. Uh, if you see me around and whatever you need, just let me know. So, uh, but now you've always got a membership application on you. Okay, good stuff, right? Okay, so again, help me spread the word. I was hopeful to have a lot more folks in here for this today. I am going to do a quick webinar. It'll just be like a five or ten minute webinar when I get back to headquarters and get that on the, the, member, uh, the members only section uh, so that hopefully, you know, the instructions will be there and uh, everybody can just take, take a look at it if they need help down the road. So, good stuff. All right, this is another big, I hope, earth-shattering announcement. <laughs> Who likes to use their membership points, recruitment points, to buy stuff at the store online and here at convention? Everybody does, right? Okay. So, the current system. <clears throat> the, 
whether you send me a paper application or an online application, if you sign up a Part Life member, you get one point. If that Part Life member eventually converts to Full Life membership, you'll get one more point. So that's two points total. If they buy a Full Life membership out of the gate, you get two points, right? Okay? So that's the current system. If you, starting October 1st though, if you do this online, you can get a total of three points instead of just two. So this is incentivizing you hopefully as a recruiter to drive as many of these online as you can. So online, what's that? Starting October 1st, if you sign them up online, you can acquire a total of three points. So how it will work is when you sign them up as a part life member, you'll get one point online. When they convert to a full life membership, then you'll get two additional points for a total of three, okay? If you sign them up online as a full life member out of the gate, you get three points. Make sense? So you get three points versus two points. Team, if you haven't figured out, I'm trying to get us away from paper. It's so much more efficient to do it online. Uh, the, the proclivity just to pay off out of the gate is much higher. The conversion rate is extremely higher. Um, so, you know, I want to do everything I can to make it very simple uh, for you to recruit them in, a, in an efficient way, especially online. And then, uh, you know, it's automatic. We do the update and psh, they can get their membership number right away. We can get their stuff cranked out to them a lot quicker. So, yes, sir. So <clears throat> Robin's reminding me because we don't use it very often, but or, I'm sorry, Heather. I'm looking at Robin and talking to Heather. Um, so say it again one more time. First name, last name, zip code, at davdonor.org. First name, last name, zip code, at davdonor.org. That's the generic email that you can put in, okay? Also, on this online application, there is a space for your sponsor ID. So you can get credit as a recruiter to, to, you know, just like you would with the paper application. The other thing with this is, if you're a chapter or department leader and you are engaged in a membership drive um, where you're paying the first 20 or something, incentivizing them somehow to become a member, all you need to do is, from the get-go of recruiting them, still get the credit card, have them select their payment options like you would, and it'll tell them you've put 10 down or whatever they're gonna put down, and it'll give them the balance as if you, know, you haven't contributed anything. All you gotta do is put a list together for me, a spreadsheet, send it to headquarters with a check covering the cost of all the people that you're supporting, and we will put it in on the back end. Okay, we will adjust those payments. So you can still incentivize recruitment, you can still do your membership drives, and you can still do it online, okay? I'm convinced doing $40 paper applications is us throwing money in the trash. Let's be more effective and efficient with our funds, okay? Go ahead. So does everybody have, everybody has an understanding of what we're doing starting October 1st, right? Yes. Okay, yep. Uh, over 80 memberships online. Okay. Can we? Can we? Yeah, they're free. Mm -hmm. We can't do them online, though. Yeah, you can. Okay. You, you can do them online. I tried and. Yep. The very first question yeah. is this is this over 80 or not? Yeah. Now, I tried it that way and called and someone said, no, it has to be signed in. I believe her. Yeah, she. she I'm not no, no, she can help you fit, show you and walk sure. you through that. No problem. Again, I said this many times the other day in my other seminar you are not out there alone. Let us know wherever you hit a, a pain point and we can help you through it, okay? Um, just real quick, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Take this with a huge grain of salt with respect to the timelines, but my staff, Robin, Heather, some other folks back at headquarters, uh, have been working incredibly hard on getting all of our uh, requirements uh, gathered for uh, the implementation of 360 to tell the programmers how to build what we need to use, okay? very tedious um, 
you know, exacting process, uh, very draining, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into that. You have to be very meticulous and detail oriented. Um, it's taken us a while, but we are at the end of that process pretty much uh, collaborating with other departments and headquarters. But I'm hopeful that our section, which is going to be called My DAV, uh, should hopefully be uh, up and running by, at least in some shape or form, to replace our current legacy membership system uh, by late 2017. Um, you know, there's a lot of great functionality that'll be part of that. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully the following year we'll roll out the new portals uh, so we'll have a more robust uh, advertising platform. Okay, so good stuff, looking forward uh, to it. It'll all be mobile friendly. You'll be able to do your officer report right from your phone. You know, great stuff, okay? But keep your fingers crossed, no, no, stu no stutter steps, and hopefully this will come to fruition. But with a project this big, we got a plan for contingencies, but it's on the horizon, okay? The freight train, or the light at the end of the tunnel is no longer a freight train, okay? <laughs> all right. All right, um, one of the last couple of things I wanted to talk about here. So, who here likes National Geographic, has read National Geographic before? If you've picked up a Nat Geo at any time in your life, you've seen this guy's work. His name is DeWitt Jones. Uh, he's a photographer, 30 plus years for the magazine. And as he's traveled around the world, he's, um, you know, learned a lot of life lessons and you know, through his observation of the people and the places that, that he's uh, met and seen. And uh, he's just got some tremendous insights. And when I first was exposed to him, I decided that uh, I, I could not share his message. Uh, and he's got a whole series of, of things. Uh, we're using it back at headquarters with respect to uh, trying to make sure that um, you know our staff is on the right page and attitudes are correct. and, and uh, uh, the theme of what we're trying to do is there. So I wanted to share a little bit of this with you um, just to make sure that as recruiters out in the field, um, th this is kind of thematically what I want all of you to espouse on behalf of DAV and, and our recruitment efforts. So go ahead. <laughs> And you know, living that life, 
this is I come to see that life really is a lot more about cooperation than it is about competition. It wasn't proving myself or taking others down that allowed me to succeed. It was simply consciously, continuously improving myself. Refining my skills, honing my wisdom, focusing my vision, ultimately, the only person I was trying to surpass was me. Don't prove. Good stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, he's an impressive guy. He's not a veteran, uh, but uh, not all wisdom comes from our ranks. You know, it's, uh, it's important to uh, tap into that wisdom wherever we can. Next slide, please. So, um, I, I encourage competition. Uh, you know, who, number one recruiter, most improved recruiter, things like that. I love when departments uh, give out awards recognizing those folks that have made uh, tremendous efforts on recruitment. But what I would hope is that those folks that are very successful in recruiting, that they share their knowledge, that they help one another um, and to, to be good recruiters as well. You know, it's, uh, it's not a state secret. Don't, don't uh, hoard that information and that knowledge. Share with one another, talk to one another, network. Hey, you, you know, pick up the phone if you see uh, somebody that uh, in your department got the award. Pick them up and call. Hey, what's the secret to your success? You know, invite that folk, invite that person to conduct a membership seminar and to put it, get, to give a few words about, you know, what, how they're successful uh, with their recruiting efforts. Uh, so, you know, everybody here has already paid a price in blood, sweat, and tears by virtue of their service, right? So there's nothing that anybody has to prove to anybody in this room, uh, in the organization. If you learn something helpful, share it. Uh, and life's more about cooperation than competition. And I think DAV, better than just about any other organization, really exemplifies that last statement. So uh, hopefully uh, you can take that back to the chapters and departments from where you're from and try to instill a little bit of that into them as well. So. Uh, real quick, uh, we wanted to get some feedback on new member orientation. Um, so last year, October-ish, I think, I did a webinar on the new member orientation guide. Um, by a show of hands, can I just you let me know if you've used this or read it or seen it? Okay, so a smattering. Uh, this is on the members only portal. Uh, so please take a look at it. It is designed as, a, as an arrow to put in your quiver. It is not set in stone. We very deliberately made all the material editable, okay? We want you to, um, to modify the orientation guide um, to the specifics of your locality. Not every DAV chapter has access to the same resources that the next chapter does. You may have a great relationship with the soldiers and sailors relief person. The next chapter may have a great relationship with DevOps and LVERs in their community. Whatever the case may be, design this to be specific to your chapter department. The idea is when a new member comes in, they have something that you can present to them that lets them know all the benefits of being a member of your specific organization. Not just DAV as a whole, but what's special about Chapter 114 in Michigan? What are they doing? They're holding service office hours every Wednesday from 12 to 4. You know, that sort of stuff, okay? You can do this in a classroom setting. We've provided a PowerPoint presentation that you can modify along with your other material. You can do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Whatever you guys feel, and gals, when I say guys, it's everybody. Um, you feel whatever you feel comfortable with, okay? So whatever you feel comfortable with. So included on that website are the new member orientation guide, the mentoring guide, so who's ever gonna be conducting the mentoring, a PowerPoint presentation, all of which, like I said, are editable. editable. Uh, and there's also the recording of the webinar that I did so that you can listen to it and get more detailed guidance on, on how you should be utilizing it. So uh, Warren wanted to take a minute, minute and talk about this and maybe get some feedback. Uh, from you, we just uh, as we as we develop this and 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 being being one of the guys in the in the trenches, 
okay, and working with chapters closely. It's, a lot of times it's easier for the volunteers to actually get some feedback and to, to figure out how to make that work and to provide some input to that. So if we got a few minutes, if you have some suggestions in terms of how we could do this and make improvements on, on this, uh, realizing that, again, this is a, a template, it's not a, and it's not written in stone, that's why we want to try to improve it. So if you have any specific inputs you'd like to do about the uh, 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 as ideas that you have toward this guide, please uh, spend a, come up to Mike and, and uh, let us know. <laughs> how many of how many you said well, was this a smattering you have actually seen it or used it? Is there anybody that's really implemented it and give us feedback on how it's worked? Well, I'll ask it that way. Nobody's implemented it. Nobody's tried it. Oh, there you go. Come on, grab a grab a mic. We, I need your feedback. It's right there, behind you. Right by uh, District Eight, I, between eight and fifteen. There. I just have a quick question for you right now. Uh, for th those of us who have not implemented this uh, or gotten, we need information to get in a computer. Do you have anything in writing where we can take with us to implement it? It's, it's downloadable. I don't know if we have any. Do we have any written? He was wondering if we have any written versions of this. No, I mean, there's, there's a lot of material on there already. Um, so when you open it up, you'll see what I'm talking about, that you can add slides to the presentation. You can modify different parts uh, to make it specific to your your chapter, uh, things of that nature. But th there's a lot of information in there already. Right, I understand that. But for us now that are here, uh, you know, you got a lot of information there. If we had something written so we can take back to, to present well, to our members, um, so they understand it a little bit better. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. If you go to the new members portal, um, or to the members only portal, pardon me, there is a webinar on there that you just click and play it and it gives you all the information you need about it. So there, other than the actual PowerPoint and, uh, oh, pardon me, there is a PowerPoint on the, the uh, members only portal as well that accompany the webinar so you can read that and it offers additional instruction as well. So there's your written format. But the webinar is only about 30 minutes long, so. Also, as a possibility, while you're here at the convention, you might want to check it out at Cyber Central. Maybe somebody at Cyber Central, Heather, somebody could give you a hand with uh, trying to find it and to work with it. Yeah. That's an idea. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Yeah, you just need your, your membership number to do that. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, that was my question. How do we find that portal in the first place? I never even heard about a portal to get there. So if you go to the main DAV webpage, DAV.org, there's tabs that run across the top. One of them is membership. Uh, there'll be a drop down that comes down and there's a, 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 you have to click on the spot that says members only. It'll prompt you for your membership number. You put your membership number in there and it'll take you to the, uh, where all of the links are to include the new members page. Yes. Uh I was just wondering an online application when you're put, putting in the personal information and you ask the new applicant for his credit card number, how is that going to stay on your phone then if you got that app? No, it, that was very clear. It will not be on your phone. Okay. Yeah, once, once you click send, you're good. Okay? Yeah, it will not be on your phone. I, I've been assured a hundred times over by all of our technical folks and the, our partners on the uh, other side of this that help manister, uh, administer that platform, that that will not be the case. Yes. Uh, like this gentleman here. Go ahead and ask the question. Uh, you don't, since you don't have any material like we can take back with us, like the members in my division, mostly seniors and they don't deal with computers. Well, I tell you what, if you go down to Cyber Central, she can print off a copy for you. Okay. Yep. Because, all right, thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Heather. Exactly. Anything else? Yes, sir. If you could use the mic. I think I can talk loud enough. Oh, no, I was talking about, okay, go ahead. I didn't see you. Yeah, you come on up to the mic. Go ahead. Or 
Well, uh, so here's how that system works currently, and we're gonna we're looking at modifying this. But what happens is when you put that new member's zip code into the system, the system queries and looks for other members that have that same zip code um, in the system, and it will list them by chapter by size of chapter in descending order, okay? So that's how the system kind of draws the information that's the logic it uses. So you have to make sure you scroll down to, to find the right chapter for, uh, for that member, that new member, unless they happen to be being going into the largest chapter in the state, okay, in that zip code area. So that's, it's by zip code. Edward, they enter it uh, by themselves. Mm -hmm. Correct. And they're right. With the, you're talking about if they do it online, that's how the system operates. If if you, you know, so but yeah, you, you just they just have to be cognizant of the fact that they have to make sure they choose the right chapter. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got a question in regards to uh, transfers. We still have to use the paper method. I mean, I've called and I've gotten great success. You know, getting uh, members transferred via phone and also members enrolled via phone mm -hmm. but uh a lot of our transfers you know from other other chapters coming in uh we still have to do it by paper well again team i'm trying to get away from paper as much as i can but you, there is an option to do it via the membership system electronically but oh we can't <laughs> okay it has to be i'll check out income it. Chapter. right so also you know warren's just reminding me uh, and i'd be remiss if i didn't say it that the transfer has to be approved by the incoming chapter. You need the record of that. Okay, so. Keeps the IG happy. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, on the, because of the online, uh, could you just design the little pamphlet? Because we, we put together a membership packet that we hand out to everyone that we see mm -hmm. with the membership application in it now. But if you, if something was designed that, uh, Tell us why to use the uh, internet and then uh, a space where you can put your membership number and, and the chapter into to insert there. I'll leave it up to the designers as well. But you understand what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, I volunteer you to put something like that together and submit it to me for consideration. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Yes, sir. Uh, using an example, if we have like a membership drive in a mall, or either we have four or five members come into our monthly meeting and they've got paper applications, mm -hmm. can I take those applications home, transfer them on the computer, take that money out of my account and pay this, or either send a paper check? Absolutely. To do Absolutely. Either way. As long as say I, I get... Do, say I do 20 memberships, I do it on paper, I take it home and transfer it to the computer. Well, with if you're putting it, if you're using the online application system, you can only do one at a time. That's what I'm saying. And you'll have I to can, do... I can do them all, but right. one at a time, right. Right, right. you'll have to do that. 20 different transactions on right. a credit card. Right, okay. Yep. Thank you. Well, yeah, and plus, you know, honestly, and here's, here's a big push for, a big reason for this push, it, it frees up my membership specialists. When you do that work on the front end, all of you out there, it lets them spend their time working those tougher issues. You know, where the gaps are in the system, uh, you know, going the extra mile, providing, you know, for lack of a better term, customer service. Our folks aren't customers, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, you know, how they're at the tip of the spear for us. If a member prospect calls headquarters, you know, that level of service that they receive there could determine whether or not they become a member. Uh, how they interact with a member determines whether or not somebody potentially stays active as a member. You know what I'm saying? 99.9% .9 of the time that interaction is great, but sometimes folks call up, you know, they'll, they'll chew through Rob and they chew through me, they end up at Mark. I mean, it's just, you know, they're having a bad day. We try their best to help them, but uh, that, those are the kinds of things that we want to concentrate on, so the more you can help us with on the front end, the better. 
I was going to make a comment about the, the mall situation where you were signing up a lot of members. The actual paper membership card has the credit card application, and if the individual has a choice, try to encourage them to give the credit card application, then you could just do it online because you'll have all that data. Would be, would be an option to do it. An option. Yes, sir. Sir, you're saying large areas were in the largest chapter in Arkansas. Okay. We send in paperwork for Chapter 7 with the right zip code for one community, and they're being assigned to another community or Chapter 4, which is a, an at-large chapter, and we'll try to find out why. People have to be selecting the wrong chapter when they're no sir when we're they're when they're signing the them up online. And it's for Jacksonville, Arkansas, where the chapter office is. So, well, so you're doing paper applications? Yes. Okay. It's being sent in and it's coming back another county. Okay. So, let me address that again. We get thousands and thousands and thousands that. of paper applications at headquarters. But, okay. So what happens is. When we get those paper applications from time to time, if we can't get a hold of anybody to clarify if there's, you know, something's misspelled or, it, it, you know, the handwriting is tough to read or whatever the case may be, um, they have to make a best guess sometimes, okay? So what we've been doing when they come in and complain to us is just do a transfer into Chapter 7. Yeah, I mean, that's the easiest way to resolve it. more paperwork for you, though. Right, that's the easiest way to resolve it once it gets to that point. But we can nip it in the bud if you do it online because then you know right. That's what we need you to know exactly where right. where they're supposed to go. All right. So. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, Heather's reminding me that if you do call us and say, hey, this person was supposed to be there, and it's something that we affected with respect to inputting them, we'll just transfer it without the transfer form. Okay, as long as we have the paper application, we can identify what the issue is without having to do the transfer, okay? Jeremy. Hey, yes, uh, Doug. Um, my name is Dr. Jeremy Roberts. I'm the department adjutant for North Carolina. Um, one thing I've noticed when the year changed and the new membership goals came out is I look at the goal, the overall goal, and I look at last year's membership. Um, and I notice sometimes maybe five or six chapters within North Carolina have a goal that's smaller than their previous year's membership numbers. And I know that was probably that was due to the deceased members, but perhaps that can be factored in with uh, goals in the future because the chapter would be shrinking if they just met goal overall. Well, I mean, let, let's, let's think this through though, okay? Goals are set at the beginning of the membership year. So the deceased people are already removed before we set the goal. Yes. So they're not impacting it at all. Uh, the only reason that I can think of that a chapter's goal would be smaller this year than it was last year was because they converted more of their part-life members. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Let's say the chapter ended with 100 members. The deceased took 10 away. Okay. Their part-lifes, they have 10 part-lifes that they have. So now their goal is, overall goal is 95 members. Okay, tracking. So they had 100 members, but now their goal is 95. Right. They're shrinking. for the, uh, their, their goal won't get them to grow for the next year. That's what I'm getting I, at. I see what you're saying. So the 55% formula, it's not the most scientific way oh, to, to yeah. do that. But when you're talking about 12, 1,300 chapters across the country and how do we manage this on a large scale? I'm hopeful that as we implement DAV 360 and I have better mechanisms to track chapter metrics, we might be able to do something a little more robust. Uh, but I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. And also, um, I know you have a small staff and there's over 1,300 chapters and about 52 departments, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you on behalf of North Carolina for what you guys are doing and uh, keep up the great work. Thank hey, you. I, I appreciate that so much, and I know Robin and Heather and the rest of us do. Uh, do me a favor and let Barry know that although we're doing a great job, I could use five or six more, you know, so. All right, <laughs> uh, yeah, get Mark too, so. Ro the treasurer's over here going, no, you ain't getting those. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. Hi, uh, Brian Ellingbo from Chapter 17 in Texas. Uh, 
when we run our membership listing, we're noticing that we do have auto payment people. Um, however, we've been monitoring them and they're not going down. Uh, after research, we found that, you know, making contact with the individuals, that the bank card, credit card, debit card has expired and they had failed to notify national. <laughs> Is there anything in place to identify those folks? So every, every day it seems like Robin and I figure out something we didn't know, okay? And that was one of them, our third party vendor that handles that for us. Um, that's called an excessive failure, okay? So what happens is, just like happens to us with other stuff, you know, I probably have credit cards on, you know, Netflix and all the other good stuff, right? My, for whatever reason, the credit card company just out of the blue, my card hasn't even expired and they send me a new card because they think somebody was after it or whatever the case may be, okay? And so your information changes and all of a sudden, you know, you, I, Amazon was the last one. Hey, what's wrong with your card? You know, that kind of thing. Um, we weren't being notified that they were trying to, to query cards for payments uh, and not, um, you know, and them not, res not being responsive. So we weren't being notified of the excessive failures. We just figured that out here in the last couple of months and we've got a mechanism in place so that they're gonna be notified and all that stuff to put in current information. Okay. And yep. The other question I have is when you do sign up new members and you get the uh, auto email, you know, saying welcome, mm -hmm. uh, it appears that the two name on it is defaulted to the credit card name and not the actual member themselves. So for instance, if, if mm. I was to use my credit card to sign up a new member, right. my name appears on the, the welcome email, and, but not the, the member. Right, it's you know a third party issue again. Uh, we're trying to resolve that. Did we? Did that? Okay, so, um, and it's happening. Uh, that's something we've been working with uh, our vendor partner on to make sure that, uh, you know, we actually put together a whole campaign last holiday season where, you know, give the gift of membership. And that ended up being, you know, pretty horrendous. That's where we found out that that was an issue. So you would think, hey, we're in the 21st century. This shouldn't be an issue. I should be able to buy a membership and, you know, give it to somebody and it goes to them. And if I want to stay anonymous or whatever, you can make all that happen. Unfortunately, it's, it's not as simple as that uh, when you're dealing with these third-party vendors because this, they're not just appeasing us on those platforms, they're, they're servicing other organizations as well. So we got to put them in headlocks to get them to do what we need them to do. So those are the battles that I fight every day, unfortunately. But I appreciate that. We are working on it. So, I don't yep. want to be a nuisance, but I use these seminars sort of as a roadmap to take me where I need to go in my membership and other ventures of the DAV. About the coin cracker, chapter 23, do you recommend pulling people out of that? Uh, about the what? The chapter 23, the coin crackers. Oh, it's your at-large chapter? Right. So do I recommend pulling people out of it? Out of that end of our chapter, providing they're in our area, local. Oh, sure. If, if you want to solicit them to and give them a transfer form to sign, and invite them into your chapter, you can certainly do that. But there's a reason they're in that for some reason. It, not, it's not necessarily derogatory. We have record of that. So okay. if, if, you're, if somebody's in an at-large chapter for a derogatory reason, we'll stop the transfer. Okay, that, that was my interest right there. Yep. Another thing is this life member. <clears throat> I'm from 171 in Kentucky, and we have, uh, our economy has went down. We have nothing right right at the present. Mm -hmm. And there's no way we're going to be able to do life members because these new veterans are coming back. They're trying to work. They don't have money to pay straight up for a, a full life membership. No. So the only way we can operate is on partial. Well, you, so they can sign up for $10 down. Right. I understand that. But for as you know, I know National will like this full membership. I understand right. that. And I, I understand that. I like to be paid in full when I do a job. Well, he, but, here's here. I understand what you're talking about with respect to right. helping folks get their membership. Okay. Right. So you can still do that. Okay. All right. I'm not telling you not to. I know to, I can still do that. Yeah. But I know that National would rather have the whole 
whole amount of money. Though. Well, the, it, it's not about the money. It's about securing them as a full life right. member. That part I understand. Yeah, because, you know, again, you're th if you continue to solely operate from that standpoint, you're throwing that money away, I right. promise you. Right at the time, that's the only way we have to operate. Yeah. Because, uh, well, I, you know, like I said, just encourage them to, to try to do it online, right. and if you want to support them with a you know, contribution towards that, you can still just send it to me and we can put it on on the back end. Right. Appreciate it. Okay. I, I want to make a comment about Go ahead. I did want to make a comment about the uh, 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 at-large chapters. For the, as a department adjutant, I see this, and the most re easy, the Easiest way to get into the at-large chapter to me is somebody that hasn't been paying their dues for a while. Okay, at some point they go to the state at-large and then they go from the state at-large to the uh, to the national at-large. So, uh, and you actually have to do a transfer to, when they go to the state at-large to get them back into the chapter they were in originally. So if you could, if you, my, my strategy has been, and I would encourage people to try to be preemptive on that, if you see people that haven't made a payment for a while, maybe contact them, like he was talking about, the $40 down and they're throwing away the quarterly statements. Give them a call and talk to them and see if maybe if they want to reactivate their membership or we use that in our department as an incentive program. We, you haven't paid for a while. We'll pay $20 to get you going again if you'll help us by writing a check for the balance of your membership and then try to do it fully paid. So that's just the strategies of things that I've learned I want to share with you. So uh, one last thing, um, and I, I just kind of wanted to mention it. I, I didn't have time to put it in the presentation, but I'm developing uh, some letters that you can use that are consistent uh, so we can have a consistent message across the country and the chapters and departments can use them to, you know, invite folks that are part life members to pay off their memberships. One of the letters will be designed so that you're not contributing anything. It's the burden is squarely on them. You will get some responses. People will do it. Um, there's another letter that's designed to allow you to contribute whatever you want towards paying off that full life member uh, membership. Uh, you know, hey, we noticed you still haven't paid off your Parlife membership. You have a balance of 100 bucks. We'll pay the first 20 if you paid the other 80, that sort of thing. Worded a lot more eloquently, of course. Um, but the idea is <clears throat> you can give us a call at headquarters, have us shoot you a spreadsheet with your Parlife list. Um, and by the way, if I've already got a recurring credit card payment on those folks, do not pay them off. Leave them alone. Put your resources into the folks that we don't have the recurring credit card on, okay? I've already got them on the hook. Don't, don't pay for those. Because um, that means they've got the wherewithal to do it, most likely, right? Um, so help the folks that, that aren't uh, so fortunate, uh, potentially. So, um, but I, I firmly believe that a letter coming from you in the locality is a lot more impactful than coming from me at headquarters. Uh, you know, they'll remember, you know, hey, oh yeah, I talked to Jeremy before, he's a good guy, I'm, you know, let me pay this off, that kind of thing, okay? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, you're better looking than the other guy. Um, but uh, at any rate, um, you know, we're trying to design these tools. I'll roll that out in an email to all the leadership uh, of the chapters and departments uh, here shortly to hopefully get us off on the right foot uh, here early in the membership year. They, I'm trying to design things as well to help us avoid the mad dash at the end of the year to try to make goal because that leads to a lot of those $40 members that we're, we're talking about and people don't understand that that doesn't help them. You know, they just go out and recruit any warm body, but they're not doing it in the correct fashion. So, um, you know, anything I can do to mitigate that will be helpful. Yes, last on question. On that report that you just were, on that report you were just mentioning, can you uh, filter out those that have the reoccurring credit mm -hmm. charge for us? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm just saying if you're savvy enough to take that information and, and do it yourself, you know, leave those guys with the asterisk by their name. But if you get it from us, we'll definitely do that for you. So, again, appreciate your time and attention. Uh, uh, hopefully we won't have too hard of a time getting to where we need to go. Uh, I know that you'll probably still have time to get in line to see the president. Uh, what Whatever type of seat you get will, be remain, will remain to be seen. But... Um, thank you so much. I've got cards up here. Uh, thanks, guys.